so we have discussed uh, syphilis now we will discuss other uh, sexually transmitted infections uh, including the uh, national program for that okay so sexually transmitted infections okay there are some major sti uh, which are included in the syndromic management like uh, the genital ulcer disease genital ulcer disease the discharge syndrome discharges uh, syndrome like uh, urethral discharge or uh, cervical discharge vaginal discharge like that uh, there will be some there will be inguinal swelling inguinal swelling lower abdominal pain etc okay besides that uh, there are some uh, diseases uh, which are uh, also sexually transmitted but not commonly included in the uh, syndrome uh, actually they are included uh, in uh, in an indirect uh, fashion that is uh, in follow up when patient comes and there is no subsidence of lesion then the uh, thorough examination is performed and other uh, there are a pathway where other uh, diseases are evaluated so uh, these non syndromic diseases include uh, the genital scabies which has been discussed in uh, the parasitic disease portion there is uh, genital molluscum contagiosum okay this is also a sexually transmitted infection the uh, pubic lice uh, infestation that is also um, this is uh, included in under uh, sti and also the genital wart okay we will discuss something about genital wart here then we will move on to the uh, syndromic diseases proper okay so genital wart genital wart caused by human papilloma virus hpv okay 6 and 18 hpv type 6 and 18 are associated with genital wart formation they are low risk variety that is not uh, associated commonly with the uh, genital malignancies okay they are also known as condyloma acuminata condyloma acuminata because they are pointed lesions not a uh, flat like condyloma lata okay uh, that is the uh, lesion of tertiary, tertiary syphilis okay next <clears throat> what are the clinical features there are see this is the condyloma acuminata lesion of male and female genitalia there is asymptomatic these lesions are asymptomatic fleshy these lesions are asymptomatic fleshy pink pointed papules and plaques fleshy pink pointed papules and plaques involving the genitalia okay in males the in males the common site of involvement is coronal sulcus coronal sulcus and frenulum okay in female it is posterior fourchette that is commonly involved okay 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 now uh, the okay this is the condyloma acuminate now the giant Cond uh, condyloma acuminata, giant genital wart, okay, giant condyloma acuminata. This is known as Bushki Lounstein tumor. Bushki Lounstein tumor, okay, giant condyloma acuminata. Okay, next histopathology. If we take a biopsy of the lesion there will be coilocytes this is characteristic of hpv lesion okay coilocytes what is that coilocytes these are nothing but squamous epithelial cell these are squamous epithelial cell what is the speciality of this cell there is hyperchromatic nuclei with perinuclear halo 
there is hyperchromatic nuclei with perinuclear halo this is the characteristic description of coelocytes characteristic of the hpv the genital wart lesion hpv lesions okay now the treatment coming to the treatment part okay okay what is the treatment part okay management is basically destructive uh, hpv lesions are uh, treated by destructive methods either by electro or uh, chemical uh, cautery okay now uh, we commonly use is podophyllin podophyllin resin 25 percent podophyllin resin 25 percent is used okay okay what it causes it causes metaphase arrest it causes metaphase arrest okay okay what are other modalities of treatment we can use imiquimod also we can use imiquimod also this is toll like receptor 7 agonist okay this is immunomodulator okay now now these things can be used in pregnant patient in pregnant patient this thing can be used the podophyllin is category x it is category x x so podophyllin can't be used in pregnant patient what we do in pregnant patient we can give some chemical cautery like trichloroacetic acid 70 percent okay or what we prefer the first line what are the first line therapy is cryotherapy cryotherapy okay here we use liquid nitrogen liquid nitrogen is used at temperature minus 196 degree centigrade okay okay what is the treatment modality of giant condyloma acuminata for giant condyloma acuminata we prefer surgical excision we prefer surgical excision okay okay this is about uh, this thing the genital wart lesion now now we will move on to the genital discharges genital discharge okay okay now genital discharge is uh, can be of various types like it can be urethral discharge it can be cervical discharge it can be anorectal discharge okay and vaginal discharge now these these things have a common etiology and vaginal discharge have some different etiology okay so so now first we will discuss the urethral discharge syndrome urethral discharges okay urethral discharges okay this can be due to gonococcal urethritis gonococcal urethritis or due to non-gonococcal urethritis okay so gonococcal urethritis we will first discuss that the causative organism is Neisseria gonorrhea Neisseria gonorrhea okay now what is the incubation period incubation period is two to five days okay what are the clinical features there are constitutional features like fever malaise etc along with that there will be severe dysuria painful micturition okay and there is profuse discharge profuse milky white discharge Okay, that is purulent, profuse purulent discharge through urethra. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, along with this, there will be the constitutional uh, features also. Okay. Now, what is the investigation that we do? We do gram stain of the discharge. That is. The investigation of choice what we get we get intracellular we get intracellular 
we get intracellular gram negative diplococci that is characteristic of neisseria gonorrhoeae okay intracellular gram negative diplococci okay now we can do culture also what is the culture media the culture media is modified thyer martin media modified thyer martin media okay now what is the treatment treatment of gonococcal urethritis we can give a single dose of injection ceftriaxone one uh, injection ceftriaxone 250 milligram im single dose okay this is curative or or we can give cefixim orally orally we can give cefixim 400 milligram single dose okay okay next next what is important nowadays the gonococcal urethritis is rather less common than non-gonococcal one due to the wide use of the antibiotics okay non-gonococcal urethritis what are the causative organism the most common one is the chlamydia trachomatis chlamydia trachomatis silver d2k okay this is most common this is most common organism what are the other organisms responsible for non-gonococcal urethritis they are urea plasma urea lyticum urea plasma urea lyticum mycoplasma okay and trichomonas vaginalis and trichomonas vaginalis okay what is the different in the clinical features of gonococcal and non-gonococcal urethritis in gonococcal urethritis the incubation period was two to five days okay now in non-gonococcal one in non-gonococcal urethritis the incubation period is a bit longer it is seven to fourteen days okay now the symptoms are relatively milder milder symptoms are present the discharge is scanty scanty discharge and this is not purulent okay this is scanty mucoid discharge scanty mucoid discharge okay this urea is also less dysuria the severity of dysuria is also less okay now what is the investigation that we do in case of for non-gonococcal urethritis we do nucleic acid amplification test mainly for chlamydia infection okay this is the most common organism and we do nucleic acid amplification test the NAT okay NAT it is done by taking the uh, swab the swab of urethral discharge okay now what is the treatment of chlamydia for or uh, the non gonococcal urethritis mostly chlamydia the treatment is azithromycin 1 gram single dose orally okay okay until and unless uh, see we have discussed the uh, variation in the clinical features of gonococcal and non-gonococcal urethritis but until and unless you do diagnostic tests like uh, the gram stain and um, uh, these uh, nucleic acid amplification you can't differentiate uh, gonococcal urethritis from non-gonococcal urethritis okay even if you diagnose a intercellular gram negative or diplococci then also you can't rule out non-gonococcal urethritis by only by the clinical features okay so whenever we treat uh, uh, urethral discharge cases we give both uh, the coverage of uh, Nisseria gonorrhea along with this uh, your uh, chlamydia okay so we prefer the regimen of cefixin plus azithromycin or ceftriaxone plus azithromycin like that okay next and also uh, we can use doxycycline also here 
doxycycline uh, doxycycline what we give we give 100 milligram twice daily dose for seven days okay so this is for your urethral discharge or urethral discharge syndrome rather because cervical the same organisms are responsible <laughs> for cervical discharge and um, the anorectal discharge also next next we will move on to the vaginal discharge syndrome vaginal discharge syndrome there are three most common causes of vaginal discharge syndrome number one candida candidiasis number two trichomoniasis and trichomoniasis number three bacterial vaginosis okay okay we will discuss one by one first candidiasis very common cause of vaginal discharge candidiasis okay what is the causative organism causative organism is candida albicans candida albicans okay what we get we get cardioid discharge we get cardioid discharge and it is evident that this is a fungus so treatment is fluconazole in anti candidal dose we give okay so this is about candidiasis next next is trichomoniasis trichomoniasis okay what is the causative organism the causative organism is trichomonas vaginalis trichomonas vaginalis this is a protozoa this is a protozoa okay the discharge what we get is greenish yellow in color and it is frothy greenish yellow frothy discharge we get in case of trichomoniasis okay if we do colposcopy if we do colposcopy then what we get is if we do colposcopy what we get we get strawberry cervix strawberry cervix okay what is that that is multiple punctate hemorrhage multiple punctate hemorrhage over cervix okay okay what is the treatment given for trichomoniasis we can give metronidazole or tinidazole metronidazole or tinidazole okay next next is bacterial vaginosis next is bacterial vaginosis okay before discussing bacterial vaginosis we must know the about the uh, common cell organisms in the vagina there is normal vaginal flora which changes along with age depending on the ph concentration of the uh, vagina okay so what happened here in case of bacterial vaginosis the normal lactobacilli that is present in vagina get reduced in number and the place is captured by anaerobic organisms okay anaerobes takes the place okay there is this discrepancy so anaerobes takes this place so what how can we diagnose this bacterial vaginosis uh, the anaerobes which are responsible are one is gardnerella vaginalis privotella Vivotella mobilancas. Okay, these are the anaerobes which takes place the position of lactobacilli in case of bacterial vaginosis. Okay, we this we diagnosed bacterial vaginosis by Amsel's criteria. Okay, out of four, three criteria must be positive. Three criteria must be positive out of the four criteria okay 
what are the criteria number 1 number 1 the discharge must be homogeneous white adherent foul smelling discharge okay this is the nature of the vaginal discharge in bacterial vaginosis number 2 number 2 the ph the ph of vagina should be more than 4.5 due to the uh, uh, reduced number of lactobacilli there is a decreased acidity and more alkalinity in the uh, region of vagina so ph will be more than 4.5 third third is whiff taste whiff taste must be positive okay what is whiff taste we'll discuss later fourth if we do saline microscopy if we do saline microscopy we will get more than 20 percent clue cells more than 20 percent clue cells okay now what is whiff taste what is whiff Next, okay. First, we will discuss with test. Next, we will see the next. Then, we will see the clue cells. Okay, okay. First is with test. Okay. What is done is the vaginal discharge is taken over a slide then after uh, inserting the pH paper to demonstrate the uh, raised pH value potassium hydroxide is applied over this and the vapor that is evaporated is weaved in such a manner in this manner there is a slide and this is taken in such a manner there is a fishy order there is a fishy order due to production of amines. Okay. So, this is called whiff test. Next. Next is this thing. The clue cell. If we do saline microscopy, what we get here is there are vaginal cells see this is the normal morphology of the vaginal cells there are nucleus nucleus is present here here also along with these you can uh, you can appreciate the lactobacillus the bacilli present here okay these are the lactobacillus normal appearing vaginal flora whereas in case of bacterial vaginosis the uh, vaginal cells is studied is studied with the anaerobic back bacteria like the gardnerella pivotella mobilancus etc okay so this is known as clue cell so clue cells are vaginal cells clue cells are vaginal epithelial cells coated with bacteria coated with bacteria okay so this is clusal so these are the amcells criteria among these four criteria three must be present okay next treatment is also metronidazole here metronidazole okay so we have discussed the discharge syndrome now what we will discuss discuss is the genital ulcer disease genital ulcer disease okay okay now one important cause of genital ulcer we have discussed previously that is the syphilis now what we will we are left with is one is chancroid chancroid okay this is a bacterial disease also the causative organism is <coughs> hemophilus hemophilus ducre hemophilus ducre okay here the incubation period is 2 to 5 days okay what is the primary lesion there is a transient papule which is converted into pustule and it breaks to form ulcer okay now there is no induration under the ulcer so this ulcer is soft chancre 
in contrast to heart shanker of syphilis okay okay now what are the features of uh, soft shanker see this is the lesions of uh, soft shanker they are number one multiple in number multiple in number okay the base is not clear like uh, your uh, hard shanker it is necrotic base necrotic base okay the margin is undermined undermined margin with ragged edges undermined margin with ragged edges okay and it is not indurated it is not indurated hence soft they are painful tender in contrast to in contrast to the ulcer of syphilis it is tender ulcer okay this ulcer is tender next they bleeds on touch they bleeds on touch the syphilis ulcer doesn't bleed on touch but it bleeds on touch okay now what about the lymph node the inguinal lymph nodes are enlarged inguinal lymph nodes enlarged tender enlarged tender they are pus filled okay okay now and it is unilateral it is not bilateral like syphilis it is unilateral okay now what are the diagnostic tests if we do smear from the ulcer base there we and, and do gram stain we will get gram negative coccobacilli gram negative coccobacilli okay this gram negative coccobacilli they are arranged one behind other arranged one behind other this spatial appearance is known as school of fish appearance this is known as school of fish appearance or railroad track appearance railroad track appearance okay next what is the culture media that we use for Haemophilus ducre? We use Muller Hinton agar. Muller Hinton agar. Okay. Muller Hinton agar is used. Okay. What are the treatment for chancroid? Here the drug of choice is azithromycin. Azithromycin. One gram single dose. Okay. One gram single dose of azithromycin. Next. Next what we will discuss. The important one is herpes genitalis. We have already learned this in the viral infections part the causative organism is herpes simplex virus 2 what is the incubation period the incubation period is 3 to 10 days okay what are the primary lesions there is grouped vesicles grouped vesicles that rupture to produce that rupture to produce ulcer ulcer which has a polycyclic margin due to coalescence of the ruptured vesicles okay these are also painful these are also painful this is the ulcer of genital herpes see the polycyclic nature of the margin of herpetic ulcer okay okay now 
inguinal lymph node there will be bilateral inguinal lymphadenopathy there will be bilateral inguinal lymphadenopathy what is the investigation that we do we perform zank smear that is a bedside test and what we get we get multinucleate giant cell multinucleate giant cell and what is the treatment here treatment is acyclovir 400 milligram thrice daily for seven days okay okay next next is lymphogranuloma venerium Lymph sorry lymphogranuloma venerium okay what is the causative organism here the causative organism is chlamydia trachomatis serover l1 l2 l3 okay here the incubation period is 3 to 30 days okay now here the primary lesion what we get is a very transient asymptomatic very transient asymptomatic genital ulcer it is often unnoticed asymptomatic genital ulcer this is the primary stage this is often remain unnoticed what we notice is the secondary stage what we notice is the secondary stage the changes in the inguinal lymph nodes okay there will be inguinal lymphadenopathy inguinal lymphadenopathy okay okay now see the nature of inguinal lymphadenopathy there is lymph node involvement above and below the inguinal ligament okay this is inguinal ligament and we get enlarged lymph node above and below inguinal lymph node and this is known as this is known as groove sign of green blood groove sign of green blood okay okay now next what we get is the tertiary stage so in the primary stage there is genital lesion what we often don't notice in the secondary stage there is changes in the inguinal lymph node there is no genital lesion then in the tertiary stage then in the tertiary stage we get genital elephantiasis genital elephantiasis due to due to lymphatic obstruction okay due to lymphatic obstruction lymphatic obstruction okay now now this lesion has also special name this is seen in male patient this is known as saxophone penis or ram's horn penis saxophone penis or ram's horn penis okay in women what we get is esthiomene esthiomene okay okay now what is the diagnostic test as the causative organism is uh, your uh, chlamydia so we have learned that chlamydia is diagnosed by nucleic acid amplification test nucleic acid amplification test okay 
what is the treatment given we give doxycycline we give doxycycline 100 mg twice daily for 3 weeks okay okay so this is something that is called inguinal bubo inguinal lymphadenopathy the inguinal bubo okay now now what we will see that is pseudo bubo now what we will see is pseudo bubo okay that is granuloma inguinal granuloma inguinal or donovanosis donovanosis what is the causative organism the causative organism is klebsiella granulomatis klebsiella granulomatis previously it was known as calimato previously it was known as calimatobacter granulomatis okay now it is called klebsiella granulomatis okay incubation period is 8 to 80 days okay now what we get here is genital ulcer genital ulcer what are the features of genital ulcer in donovanosis they are beefy red in color painless ulcer having exuberant granulation tissue in base exuberant granulation tissue okay as it is granulation tissue so this also bleeds on touch these also bleeds on touch okay now this is one condition where inguinal lymph node is normal inguinal lymph node is absolutely normal okay inguinal lymph node is normal just a minute oh. inguinal lymph node is normal but what we get we get pseudo bubo we get pseudo bubo what is that there is subcutaneous nodule in the groin subcutaneous nodule in groin this nodule may get ruptured and produce ulceration also so this is the picture of granuloma inguinal see this is ulcer this is genital ulcer and beside this there is ulceration in the inguinal region ulcer in groin which is not due to lymph node involvement this is known as pseudo bubo this is known as pseudo bubo okay now what we do we do diagnostic test here we stain the lesion here with gymsha stain gymsha stain okay and what we get we get donovan bodies we get donovan bodies what is that they looks like closed safety pin closed safety pin appearance of donovan bodies why because there is bipolar condensation of bipolar condensation of chromatin okay so this is about uh, granuloma inguinal what is the treatment uh, treatment we give azithromycin here also now now we will discuss the most important part of sexually transmitted infections that is the syndromic management the syndromic management 
syndromic management this is very important in resource poor con uh, con situation okay uh, where we don't have the facilities for investigation of each and every cases and we have to depend on the syndromic management okay we have divided uh, various syndrome um, various diseases under uh, some syndromic head these are uh, we will discuss each syndrome with the uh, associated drugs okay so this is number one kit one the gray color kit the gray color kit kit one is used for it is used for the discharge syndrome which include urethral discharge cervical discharge anorectal discharge and also for presumptive treatment also for presumptive treatment okay okay now we have seen that the causative organism for all these is either gonorrhea or non gonococcal urethritis so the drugs what we give here is tab cefixim 400 mg stat single dose and tab azithromycin 1 gram stat single dose okay now what is presumptive treatment if a patient comes to STI clinic with some complaint other than these features then the kit one is given even without the symptoms because the gonococcal and non-gonococcal urethritis have very grave uh, sequence they can lead to ectopic pregnancy they can lead to infertility so uh, irrespective of uh, presence of these symptoms kit one is provided to them them the, the high risk group the high risk group patients okay so this is called presumptive treatment this is for gonorrhea and non-gonococcal urethritis for high risk group next second second is kit 2 kit 2 that is green color kit this is used for vaginal discharge vaginal discharge that is our target organism here is candida and your anaerobes which are responsible for bacteria bacterial vaginosis and trichomoniasis okay so for candida we give fluconazole 150 milligram single dose and for anaerobes and trichomoniasis we give tablet secnidazole tablet secnidazole 2 gram that is 2 tablets of 1 gram dose twice daily on day 1 just this ok next third kit 3 kit 3 this is white color kit I have given the pictures of each kit because they are asked in uh, MCQ exam nowadays due to the image based question of MCQ pattern now kit 3 is genital ulcer disease genital ulcer disease non herpetic genital ulcer disease non herpetic what are the causes of genital ulcer disease non herpetic first is syphilis okay most important is syphilis next second second is chancroid okay and third is donovanosis donovanosis okay so for syphilis what is the treatment of choice treatment of choice is benzathine penicillin benzathine penicillin as we all know 2.4 million units is given each half is uh, given deep intramuscular in each buttocks and for chancroid and donovanosis that is the clepsular granulomatis and the hemophilus ducre what we use is azithromycin 1 gram single dose 
azithromycin 1 gram single dose okay next kit 4 next is kit 4 kit 4 this is blue colored kit okay this is for non herpetic genital ulcer disease who are allergic to penicillin who are allergic to penicillin okay here the uh, concept is same we have to treat syphilis chancroid and donovanosis for chancroid and donovanosis we give azithromycin one gram stat dose and for penicillin allergic patient we give doxycycline we give doxycycline 100 milligram twice daily for 15 days okay that is 30 tablets of doxycycline is provided okay next next is kit 5 kit 5 it is red colored kit this is for herpetic genital ulcer disease herpetic genital ulcer disease okay here what is given acyclovir is given tab acyclovir 400 milligram thrice daily for seven days that is 21 tablets of acyclovir is provided here next this is kit 6 kit 6 yellow colored kit okay kit 6 yellow colored kit this is for lower abdominal pain this is for lower abdominal pain okay what is the target organism target organism is number one hemophilus ducre hemophilus ducre anaerobes and chlamydia okay they are responsible for sorry gonorrhea chlamydia and anaerobes gonorrhea chlamydia and anaerobes okay that is the organism for um, the gen uh, uh, cervical discharge etc and anaerobes okay so what we give to cover gonorrhea we give say fix the 400 milligram single dose for chlamydia here we give doxycycline 100 milligram twice daily for 14 days for anaerobes we give metronidazole 400 milligram twice daily for 14 days so 28 tablets each of doxycycline and metronidazole is provided here next next the last one is kit 7 that is black colored kit it is for inguinal bubo inguinal bubo okay the inguinal bubo in chancroid there is involvement of uh, the unilateral uh, inguinal lymph node that is painful and contain pus so one is h ducre okay next it also should cover the inguinal bubo of calimatobac uh, sorry, lymphogranuloma venerium that is chlamydia trachomatis should also cover so for hemophilus ducre what we give we give azithromycin one gram for chlamydia trachomatis we give doxycycline 100 milligram twice daily for 21 days okay so here 42 tablets of doxycycline is provided okay so these are the syndromic management including the individual drug kits and 
respective syndrome with their etiology so sexually transmitted infection this is a very important topic many questions are expected from this portion as national program is associated with it so these kits must also be memorized because in image based question you can expect any of them